Hello, 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 and welcome back. So now we are going to talk about our next domain, which is domain number three, which focuses on the query process. I have been told by several individuals that while it says 8.9%, on the content outline, they just felt like they had so many query questions. And so I often say, well, did you study the query process? And they're like, well, what are you talking about the query process? So let's make sure that we're all on the same page. So this is the most recent version of the query process at the time of me providing you with this information. This particular file, oh, it's about, I don't know, 30 pages in, maybe 20, 30 pages in, in duration. I personally have a physical copy. I printed it. Um, I am, I'm a nerd when it comes to resources. So I have this like in a, a bound, like I took it to, I think it was Office Max, Office Depot, whatever their name is. I had it like spiral bound, you know, so I can flip through it and, and make notes. So one of the things that I think is really critical for this particular domain, even though it's eight, 0.9%, it is still a skill that you need for the workplace. But keep in mind, most organizations, and I say most because as a healthcare consultant, I've been to organizations where they don't have a query process policy, right? And so most organizations will use this document as a, what do you want to call it? You know, more like a foundational document to help build their, their own resource. So it's 26 pages in length. And what you'll notice, there is a summary at the top. And I like this summary because this is important for you. Notice it says, this industry practice supersedes all previous version of this practice brief. This is important because you may be Googling query practice, right? And you may find an older article practice brief where some of the things we did previously, we no longer do. In your CCS exam review book that you have available from AHIMA, and by now, if you haven't figured it out, that's a resource that I think you need to have for this process. So when I look at this title, or what do you call this? Table of contents, if you will, the features part, it has very specific areas. Who should follow this brief? the standards, a message about problem lists, templates. Let's talk about that for a second. In some organizations, the query is literally a piece of paper, or it's something that is an electronic Microsoft Word document. It could be embedded into your electronic health record system as a template. The organization could use a software that lays on top of other software that the organization is using. And so for number, page number seven, and let's just, let's just jump over there real quick. They talk about a few things, standards of use, template format, you know, they go into some sp specific things. And I think it's important to note as you're reading this, 
Number one, do not try and memorize this. Guys, it's a lot of information. I'm going to go back to my motto. Read three times. First time for the knowledge, the awareness. Second time for understanding. Third time for application. Application is the name of the game. Remember, on the CCS exam, as is with all AHIMA exams, they're based on cognitive skills, recall, analysis, and application. So my model that I'm presenting to you is really designed to ensure that you're touching the information more than once so that you can successfully pass the exam. Please keep in mind this review that I'm doing, this little mini review, the content outline is the floor of what you need to know for the exam. As you're going through the questions in the review guide, you're going to have to lean into other resources that you need to support you in this process. So the two tasks that you are expected to perform. Determine if a provider query is compliant. Hmm. Let's go back over to the, the file. What file am I talking about? This one right here. And is that here in this, in this file? Do they talk about compliant queries? Oh, I see on page six, but guess what? The whole file, <laughs> the whole file is called guidelines for achieving a compliant query process. Okay. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So determine if a provider qu query is compliant. So first you got to understand what you're reading, how to apply it. Why is this important? The application part. Well, look at what it says for the second task. Analyze current documentation to identify query opportunities. Oh, oh, do you see something? Everything that you've been hearing me talk about, the foundation of this whole process is the health record documentation. So you have to understand the forms that are in the health record, how that information gets onto the health record, and then be able to execute the query process. One of the things that I do as a professional is I love clinical documentation improvement. And I think it goes back to when I first started in healthcare 1992 as a medical assistant and I worked side by side with the physician at that time we had paper records and I spent a lot of time chasing around the medical record I spent time at the end of our day every day going through the record making sure that the the forms that were supposed to be in the record were there so early in my career when I wasn't a coder, when I was a medical assistant, I realized why it was important to have that high quality documentation. And from a personal perspective, my daughter, who's now 31, who is special needs, her medical record was lost. All of the diagnostic tests that have been performed for several years were lost. Luckily, we were able to piece back the components of her medical record. But from that day forward, I keep a lot of her medical records at home as a personal health record. All right. So back to provider education. This is the last point that I want to uh, kind of end on. In order to achieve accurate and complete documentation, it is essential that the physician and the coder collaborate. That's the guidelines. I didn't make that up. But as a brand new professional, please make sure that you're not over querying the provider. 
All right, well, that's all for the provider query process.